In the vast expanse of existence, from the earliest moments of time's unfolding, whispers have stirred of malevolent entities lurking within the cosmic abyss. Born of the void, these mysterious beings yearn to distort reality into a realm of perpetual torment and chaos. Dubbed the Void Lords, their envy of the Pantheon's supremacy burned with unquenchable passion. Pooling their formidable powers, the Void Lords crafted the Old Gods, twisted embodiments of their sinister intent, with a singular goal in mind, to seize dominion over developing titans as they slumbered in their infancy. The Void Lords cast these abominations into the great dark beyond, in a desperate bid to find worlds housing dormant titan souls. Thus, like malevolent shadows, the Old Gods descended upon mortal realms, their presence an omen of corruption and decay, staining everything they touched in their relentless pursuit of the elusive world soul. Born from the primordial darkness of the Void, the Old Gods wielded dominion over the very essence of their creators, granting them control over the shadows themselves. Mortal acolytes, drawn by the cryptic allure of these ancient horrors, delved into forbidden arts, flirting dangerously with the abyss of the Old Gods' influence. Among the remnants of the ancient Black Empire, the ritual dagger Zalatath stood as a grim testament to the unholy pacts forged by the servants of the Old Gods. Wielded in blasphemous ceremonies by shadow priests, it whispered forbidden truths, a conduit to the sinister power of the Void. In the eternal interplay between light and darkness, the Old Gods loomed as malevolent puppeteers, ceaselessly striving to bend the cosmos to their twisted will. Meanwhile, mortal souls danced perilously on the precipice of oblivion, ensnared by the seductive allure of their dark influence. Now we jump to the Black Empire, but if you've watched my Titans and Keepers video, this will sound familiar, but I felt it was important to throw into the Old Gods as it is important to their backstory, but figured I'd let you know just in case it sounds redundant. But either way, let's get into it. In ancient Azeroth lies a chilling tale of encroaching darkness where the very fabric of existence trembled under the sinister presence of the Old Gods. These harbingers of chaos and ruin, Cthun, Yogg-Saron, Nazoth, and Yashara, descended upon the realm from the boundless expanse of the Great Dark Beyond, crashing into its surface with cataclysmic force. Each impact left a scar upon the land, embedding the malevolent entities into the very heart of Azeroth. A veil of despair unfurled across the land as the Old Gods extended their tendrils of corruption, ensnaring all in their path. From the Old Gods themselves emerged the Enraki, known as the Faceless Ones, and the Akir, born from the organic remnants of their master's colossal forms. These creations erected towering citadels and temple cities around the slumbering behemoths, their loyalty unyielding as they worshipped their overlords. Foremost among these structures stood the domain of Yashara, epitome of the Old Gods' might, heralding the dawn of the Black Empire, a reign of terror that would shroud Azeroth in darkness for ages to come. As the Old Gods' dominion spread, they enslaved the once wild elementals that roamed the ancient landscape. Even the elemental lords joined forces in a desperate bid against the encroaching darkness. Yet despite their valor, they found themselves overwhelmed by the relentless tide of Enraki and Akir. Ragnaros, Neptulon, Alakir, and Therizane found themselves ensnared in the web of servitude spun by the Old Ones, and thus were forced to be the Old Gods' lieutenants. With no spirits of Azeroth to oppose their advance, the borders of the Black Empire expanded unchecked, casting the world into an abyss of perpetual twilight, where death and suffering reigned supreme. Thus Azeroth found itself ensnared in the clutches of unfathomable evil, a realm teetering on the brink of oblivion. Amidst the celestial expanse, the Titan's Odyssey brought them to Azeroth, where they were met with a formidable resistance, the elemental forces, sworn to repel the Pantheon's advance in the name of their shadowy overlords. Recognizing the hunger for destruction that festered within the Old Gods, the Titans were compelled to act, igniting a cataclysmic war that would echo through the ages. Yet wary of the colossal power they wielded, and the delicate balance of Azeroth's world soul, the Titans refrained from direct confrontation. Instead they forged mighty champions, the Titan Forged, to wage battle against the elemental legions of the Old Gods. In a titanic clash that shook the very foundations of the world, the Titan Forged emerged triumphant, sealing their adversaries within the newly forged elemental plane. But as the Titan Forge advanced towards the bastion of Yashara, dread gripped the hearts of the Pantheon. Fearing their creations would falter against the insurmountable might of the Old God, Amunthul the High Father reached down from the heavens, wrenching Yashara from Azeroth's surface in a massive upheaval. The Old God was torn from Azeroth's crust. Upon Yashara being ripped from the planet, 
in its place stood the Well of Eternity. Yet even in death, the old god's grip upon Azeroth remained unyielding. Realizing the futility of eradication without risking the world's demise, the Pantheon commanded their Titanforged servants to imprison the vile deities, rather than slay them. Thus commenced a grueling campaign, a relentless struggle to contain the remaining old gods beneath the world's surface. Through acts of courage and selflessness, the Titanforged prevailed, ensuring the eternal imprisonment of the malevolent beings and safeguarding Azeroth from the encroaching darkness that sought to consume it. Thus, amidst the chaos of war and the clash of cosmic powers, the fate of Azeroth hung in a delicate balance. The fate of the old gods was sealed in fortresses created by the hands of the Titanforged. Cthune, harbinger of darkness, found its vile essence ensnared within the formidable walls of Ankaraj, standing near the Titanforged bastion of Oldum. Across the expanse of Azeroth, the mysterious prison of Nizoth remained shrouded in mystery, its location obscured by the depths of the oceans, a chilling reminder of the old god's elusive grip upon the world's secrets. And finally, yogg saron stood as the last bastion of darkness, unleashing its monstrous Cthraxi generals in a desperate bid to stem the tide of the Titanforged advance. But even the mightiest of foes could not withstand the relentless onslaught of the Keepers, who bound the malevolent entity beneath the hollowed halls of Ulduar a titan city watched over by six vigilant guardians. Thus the saga of imprisonment unfolded, a testament to the titanic struggle between light and darkness, as the world of Azeroth bore witness to the eternal dance of cosmic forces. The tendrils of yogg saron and his fellow old gods insidiously wound their way into the very essence of Azeroth's creations. Among these, the earthen, proud progeny of the titans, were not spared from the creeping corruption of the curse of flesh. This affliction, a malevolent touch upon their stony forms, brought on a profound transformation, turning their once resilient bodies to flesh. But the curse's reach extended beyond the earth and alone, from the stoic mechanomes to the majestic Tolvir, from the indomitable Mogu to the stalwart Vrykul. All fell prey to this insidious influence. Stone shattered, metal rusted, as their bodies succumbed to this inexorable tide of change. Even the mighty Vrykul, with their ironclad visage, found themselves diminished, birthing smaller, weaker kin, a mockery of their former glory. It seemed the old god's design was to subvert the titan's creations from within, a scheme that bore fruit with each corrupted breath. In this transitional state, they navigated the precarious balance between order and chaos, their very existence a testament to the ceaseless struggle between creation and corruption, light and darkness, in the ever-shifting tapestry of Azeroth's history. Towards the end of their guardianship over a realm teetering on the brink of corruption, the Titans undertook meticulous measures to safeguard the world they had wrought. Among their arsenal of safeguards, the Keepers, custodians of ancient wisdom and boundless power, a race of stalwart guardians destined to inhabit the sealed realms of their creation. At the helm of this grand endeavor stood Keeper Odin, appointed as prime designate of Azeroth, entrusted with the solemn duty of preserving the realm's fragile balance. The Keepers bestowed upon Azeroth five mighty dragon aspects, paragons of elemental power and guardians of the world's sanctity, even though Odin did not want to grant them that power. He felt that the Titanforged were better equipped to handle any of that. Each aspect was charged with a sacred duty, to watch over and protect Azeroth in the Titan's absence, to stand as sentinels against the encroaching darkness, and to ensure that the world remained untainted by the pervasive corruption that threatened to consume it. Thus amidst the shadows of impending departure, the Titans forged a legacy of resilience and vigilance, entrusting the fate of Azeroth to the unwavering guardianship of its protectors. In the books of Azeroth's history, the legend of Galakron looms large. A titanic proto-dragon whose monstrous rampage across the icy expanse of Northrend threatened to consume all in his path. Yet amidst the chaos stood Keeper Tyr and the nascent dragon aspects, rallying to confront this primal menace. Their grand deeds forever etched in the scrolls of time. However, whispers lingered in the winds of fate, hinting at a darker truth, the insidious hand of the old gods lurking behind Galakron's savage fury. While the dragon aspects stood as bastions of protection, their destinies intertwined with the very fabric of Azeroth. One among them harbored a hidden darkness, Naltharion, later known as Deathwing, bore a profound connection to the depths of the world, an affinity that would ultimately unravel the fabric of his sanity. In the aftermath of the cataclysmic war of the ancients, Maligos withdrew into seclusion, haunted by the echoes of his loss and the relentless march of time. As millennia passed, the weight of solitude bore down upon him driving him inexorably towards madness. 
Nazdormu, the Timeless One, glimpsed through the veils of time, saw the tendrils of corruption woven by the old gods, entwining Maligos in a web of insanity. Thus, amidst the ebb and flow of cosmic forces, the fate of the dragon aspects became entangled with the machinations of ancient evils. In a tale woven with deceit and despair, Loken's affair with Thorne's beloved wife Sif proved to be a catalyst for his descent into the clutches of yogg Saron's insidious influence. Blinded by guilt and consumed by fear, Loken succumbed to the whispers of the ancient corruption, committing the ultimate betrayal by taking Sif's life and cunningly shifting the blame to Arngrim of the Frost Giants. This treacherous act ignited a devastating conflict between the Frost Giants and Thorum, plunging the realm into chaos and strife. Yet Loken's plans did not end there. With a deceitful hand, he marshaled his own army, forged within the depths of the Forge of Wills. Little did he know that this very army bore the mark of yogg Saron's curse, the insidious curse of flesh, that would sow discord amongst the Titan-forged races. Enveloping civilizations in its sinister grasp, Thorim, burdened by the weight of betrayal and loss, retreated to his throne, succumbing to a deep sadness that would endure for eons, casting a shadow over his kingdom for millennia to come. Driven to the brink of madness by his own deeds and looming specter of Algalon the Observer's judgment, Loken found himself teetering on the precipice of desperation. In a bid to escape the wrath of the Pantheon, he willingly surrendered to the seductive whispers of yogg Saron, hoping to wield its dark power as a shield against his inevitable downfall. Loken committed the ultimate betrayal, snuffing out the life of Mimiron, who was on the cusp of uncovering his treachery. Yet even in death, Mimiron's essence persisted, transferring into a new mechanical form by the ingenious Mechanomes. Empowered by the malevolent influence of yogg Saron, Loken ensnared Keeper Hodor and Freya in a web of enchantment bending them to his will with twisted ease. With cunning persuasion, he coerced Helia, the first Valkyr, into sealing the sacred halls of Valor, ensnaring Odin and the Valajar within their celestial confines. Only one obstacle remained in Loken's path, the steadfast constellar, Algalon. Manipulating the very fabric of Ulduar's systems, Loken usurped the mantle of Prime Designate, granting himself dominion over the Titan's alert mechanisms. With calculated precision, he sabotaged these systems, ensuring that no plea for aid would reach Algalon, leaving the cosmos vulnerable to his dark schemes. As Keeper Ra realized the Pantheon had been snuffed out, a profound sense of despair engulfed him, driving him to retreat from the world, his soul heavy with the grief at the loss of his divine creators. Alone and consumed by sorrow, he withdrew into the depths of solitude, seeking solace in the silent embrace of isolation. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos unleashed by Loken the Betrayal, the Valiant Keepers Tyr and Arcetus refused to yield to despair. Rallying the varied races of Earthen, Mechanomes, Vrykul, and the Vigilant Watcher Ironea, they embarked on a daring exodus to the southern reaches, fleeing from the wrath of their corrupted kin. In a daring act of defiance, they seized the sacred acts of Norganon, repositories of timeless knowledge, hoping to preserve the truth of their tumultuous journey for the Titan's eventual return. However, Loken, fueled by the dark whispers of yogg Saron, dispatched two fearsome Cthraxi minions to thwart their escape. In a selfless act of heroism, Tyr sacrificed himself to ensure the group's survival, buying them precious time to flee the clutches of their pursuers. As they pressed onward to Sanctuary, the Vrykul remained behind, paying homage to the fallen Keeper at the sight of his noble sacrifice. Guided by Archytas' unwavering leadership, the weary refugees found respite within the ancient halls of Uldaman, where they safeguarded the precious disks and entered a deep slumber, awaiting the dawn of a new era. In a chilling display of cunning strategy, yogg Saron ensnared the Keepers of Northrend, including Loken, in a web of lethargy and obedience. Rather than exerting its influence to its limits, yogg Saron opted for a calculated approach, ensuring its grip remained firm by lulling its captives into a state of complacency and dormancy. Content with the triumph it had achieved, yogg Saron shrewdly refrained from overreaching, recognizing the peril of risking its hard-won dominion. Instead of risking exposure by extending its influence too far, it chose to bask in the glory of its conquest, patiently awaiting the unfolding of its dark designs from the depths of Ulduar's sinister confines. Now we jump forward to the War of the Ancients. As fate cast its shadow over Azeroth, the old gods found themselves caught off guard by the unexpected arrival of the Burning Legion, whose invasion posed a dire threat to their very existence, 
and of the slumbering world soul they coveted for corruption. Ten millennia in the past, amidst the tumultuous reign of Queen Ajara and her ambitious highborn, a sinister plan took shape. Their aim was to tear open a portal vast and potent enough to usher forth the malevolent titan Sargeras in all his terrible glory. In response, the wise dragon aspect Alexstrasza sought counsel with her brethren, invoking the aid of each revered aspect. Amongst these illustrious dragons, it was Neltharion, leader of the Black Dragonflight and known as the Earth Warder, who devised a daring scheme to confront the looming catastrophe. Teaming up with his trusted ally Maligos, Neltharion proposed the creation of a seemingly simple yet profoundly potent artifact, a golden disc infused with the combined might of all the aspects. This legendary relic, dubbed the Dragon Soul, held within its gleaming surface a power so immense that no force, be it within Azeroth or beyond, could hope to withstand its might. In the face of mounting omens and dire prophecies, the Dragonkin stood united, ready to wield the Dragon Soul as their ultimate weapon against the encroaching darkness. Persuaded by Neltharion's impassioned plea, the other aspects lent their strength to the creation of this legendary artifact. Amidst the hollowed halls of dragonkind, a shadow lurked, unbeknownst to the vigilant eyes of his fellow aspects. Neltharion found himself ensnared by the haunting whispers of the imprisoned old gods, whose ancient malevolence pulsed within the very heart of the earth he swore to protect. For untold ages, these insidious entities had schemed and plotted, their insatiable hunger for power driving them to bend Neltharion to their will. Crafters of manipulation and masters of deception, the old gods harbored a sinister agenda to harness the cataclysmic might of the dread titan Sargeras and bend it to their own malevolent desires. Through whispers and promises, they sought to corrupt the noble Neltharion, a weapon of unimaginable destruction poised to unleash chaos upon the world. With cunning precision, they wove their dark machinations, manipulating events from the shadows, all in the pursuit of their ultimate goal, the shattering of Azeroth's ancient bonds and the dawn of their long-awaited freedom. Yet amidst the looming threat of oblivion, a glimmer of hope emerged. In a twist of fate unforeseen, Illidan Stormrage, wielding the legendary dragon soul alongside his brother Malfurion, rose to defy the encroaching darkness. Unaware of the true extent of his actions, Illidan sealed the portal, unwittingly thwarting the old god's vile scheme and preserving Azeroth from certain doom. A millennia-spanning saga unfolded as sinister tendrils of the old gods once again sought to unleash chaos upon the realms of Nuzdormu the timeless guardian of time itself. With calculated precision, they sundered the fabric of reality, weaving a tapestry of temporal upheaval designed to alter the course of history itself. They dispatched unwitting pawns, individuals whose mere existence in the past would set in motion a series of events culminating in the return of Sargeras, and with him, the promise of their own liberation. Their insidious plans aimed to rewrite the history of the War of the Ancients, reshaping destiny to suit their dark desires. However, their grand design met an unexpected obstacle in the form of Krasis, Ronin, and Broxigar, stalwart warriors thrust unwillingly into the tumultuous currents of time by the hand of Nazdormu himself. United by fate and bound by a common purpose, these courageous souls stood firm against the tide of chaos, thwarting the old god's nefarious scheme and preserving the fragile balance of history. Yet this temporal clash was but a footnote in the accounts of cosmic conflict a mere skirmish in the eternal struggle between light and shadow. For behind the scenes, Nazdormu had waged a silent war of his own, thwarting the old god's initial attempt to unravel the fabric of time itself with unwavering resolve. Though the scars of battle marred the fabric of reality, the balance endured, a testament to the enduring strength of those who dared to stand against the forces of darkness. In the midst of Azeroth's ancient history, a haunting greenish ore surfaced casting a shadow of unease across the land. Known as Saronite, its sinister properties stirred deep concern among the Night Elves, who grappled with its sudden and ominous appearance. Determined to curb its spread, the astute druid Fandral Stagholm devised a daring plan, drawing upon the mystical energies of Nordrasil, the revered world tree. Planting its branches far and wide, Fandral aimed to harness the tree's potent magic to contain the encroaching darkness focusing particularly on a sprawling deposit of Saronite nestled within the grisly hills of Northrend. As time unfurled its tapestry, the branches grew into towering arboreal guardians, their roots intertwining with the very essence of the land. In the heart of Northrend, amidst the frost-choked expanse, one such sapling flourished, 
ascending to the lofty height of the world tree in its own right, dubbed Antrasil, or Crown of the Snow. This magnificent arboreal sentinel stood as a testament to Fandral's ingenuity and the enduring resilience of nature. Yet, unbeknownst to the denizens of Azeroth, the roots of Andrasil delved deeper than they could fathom, entwining with secrets that would shape the fate of the world for millennia to come. While Andrasil's towering presence stood as a beacon of hope, its verdant branches reaching toward the heavens. Beneath its majestic canopy, a darkness festered, unseen and insidious. Unbeknownst to the world above, Andrasil's roots delved deep, unwittingly breaching the prison of the malevolent old god, yogg saron with each passing moment, the ancient corruption seeped into the land, twisting the mind of the Tonka and the forest nymphs into a frenzy of violence and madness. Even the vigilant eyes of the Cenarian Circle could not deny the truth. Andrasil had become a vessel of corruption, its very essence tainted by the touch of darkness. In a desperate bid to stem the tide of corruption, the druids took decisive action, laying waste to the once proud world tree and renaming it Vordrasil a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath its boughs. Yet the true extent of Andrasil's legacy would only reveal itself in the fullness of time. Unbeknownst to the mortal realm, Yogg-Saron's malevolent influence had reached far beyond the physical realm, breaching the sacred realm of the Emerald Dream. With a foothold established, the old gods seized upon the newfound avenue of corruption, with Nazoth in particular taking keen interest in sowing the seeds of chaos within the ethereal realm. Thus, from the depths of darkness, the Emerald Nightmare emerged, a twisted reflection of the world's deepest fears and darkest desires, its tendrils spreading ever outward, ensnaring the unwary in its suffocating grasp. And so, the legacy of Andrasil, once a symbol of hope and renewal, became irrevocably intertwined with the encroaching shadows that threatened to engulf Azeroth in eternal darkness. Through the ebb and flow of ages, Cthune, the malevolent old god, wove its web of corruption whispering dark promises to his devoted Karaji minions. Together they carved out a bastion of darkness amidst the shifting sands of Silithus, the formidable fortress temple known as Ankaraj. Patiently biding its time, Cthulhu awaited the moment when its forces would swell to a crescendo, poised to challenge the Night Elves for supremacy over the continent of Kalimdor itself. Thus dawned the War of the Shifting Sands, a cataclysmic clash that would echo through the books of history. Corrupted titan constructs like the stoic Tolvir marched alongside the relentless Silithid hordes and cunning Karaji leaders, intent on driving the Kaldari from their ancestral lands. Despite the valiant efforts of the Night Elves led by the brilliant archdruid Fandral Staghelm, the tide of battle turned against them. Tragedy struck with the death of Fandral's son, driving the Night Elves from Silithus and paving the way for Cthulhu's imminent victory. Yet in a twist of fate, the combined might of the Dragonflights and the stalwart defenders of Kalimdor rallied to stem the tide of darkness. Faced with the looming specter of an apocalyptic conflict, a desperate solution emerged. The Karaji and their malevolent master were sealed within the very heart of Ankaraj, bound by the mystical barrier known as the Scarab Wall. In a bitter act of defiance, Fandral Staghelm shattered the scepter of the Shifting Sands, sealing the fate of Ankaraj and casting a shadow of sorrow over the land. Previously, I mentioned about the worshippers of the old gods, but never said much more than that, but I figured it'd be a good time to mention it now. The depth to which sentient beings succumb to the dark influence of the old gods remains veiled in mystery, yet those most attuned to the haunting whispers have congregated under the banner of the Twilight's Hammer, a formidable alliance bound by fervent allegiance to their supernatural masters. Driven by zealous fervor, the disciples of the old gods sow chaos and discord across Azeroth's lands, their corrupted footsteps leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. As ancient whispers echo through the corridors of civilization, the true scope of the old god's sway remains elusive, lurking within the fragile confines of sanity. Within the murky abyss of fanaticism, followers and cultists relinquish their sanity, transforming into malevolent entities beyond recognition. Some take on grotesque forms like the Faceless Ones or Elemental Ascendants, manifestations of the occult grip upon their souls. Amidst this maelstrom of chaos, a dark figure emerges as a harbinger of the old god's will. Cho'gal, the Ogre Mage, stands as the formidable champion of Cthulhu, binding mortals to the ancient entity's will with arcane mastery. Under his leadership, the Twilight's Hammer rises as the epicenter of mortal devotion, drawing the fractured and devoted into its shadowy embrace. From the desolation of Silithus to the abyss of Blackrock Depths, 
The followers of the old gods gather, lured by the whispers of awakening power. Here, amid the ruins of civilization, they await the resurgence of Cthulhu, or pledge allegiance to Ragnaros the Fire Lord, alongside the Dark Iron Dwarves. An unholy convergence of mortal and malevolent united in their reverence for darkness. In the heart of the eastern kingdoms lies the Twilight Highlands, a realm cloaked in darkness, where the largest bastions of the Twilight's hammer thrive. At Grim Batal in the foreboding Bastion of Twilight, the faithful gather. Drawn by the allure of ancient power and the promise of unfathomable darkness, Yet amidst this congregation of malevolence, another race pays homage to a fallen deity, the Mantid. Akin to the Karaji and Nerubians, still revere Yashara, the ancient old god vanquished by the pantheon in ages past. Their unwavering devotion serves as a poignant reminder of the old god's enduring legacy, their dark influence transcending the confines of time and space to ensnare the souls of the faithful. In the aftermath of their defeat amidst the shattered lands of the Broken Isles during the Second War, Chogall and the remnants of the Twilight's Hammer Cult embarked on a daring voyage across the endless expanse of the Great Sea, their destination shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Drawn by the haunting whispers of the malevolent old gods, whose dark promises beckoned from the distant shores of the mysterious continent of Kalimdor, Chogall and his loyal followers sought to unravel the secrets that lay hidden within its ancient lands. Their journey, however, did not go unnoticed. Hot on their trail was Garona, the renowned assassin and former pawn of the Shadow Council. Her sights set on tracking down the last remnants of the nefarious organization that once held her in its control. In the turbulent aftermath of the cataclysmic Third War, the insidious whispers of the old gods slithered through the ether, drawn to the fiery ambition burning within Illidan's storm rage. With a hunger for power that mirrored their own insatiable desires, Illidan cast a spell of profound magnitude, beckoning forth the serpentine Naga to answer his call. Led by Lady Vash, the Naga pledged their allegiance not out of reverence for Illidan's demonic prowess, nor from any shared history, but from a deeper, more sinister compulsion, the will of the old gods themselves. They sensed in Illidan's quest to vanquish the Lich King the seeds of a new conflict, one that would engulf Azeroth in a maelstrom of chaos, pitting undead, demons, and mortal nations against one another. In the swirling vortex of this looming conflict, Chogall and his cultists saw an opportunity to awaken their dark masters with minimal resistance. Viewing Illidan as a potent catalyst for discord, the old gods orchestrated the Naga's involvement in his crusade against the Lich King, confident in his ability to sow the seeds of conflict across the world. Yet, should Illidan stray from their designs or become a hindrance to their machinations, the Naga stood ready to execute their master's will with ruthless efficiency, prepared to sever the ties that bound him to his corrupted legacy. Thus, amidst the chaos of war, the stage was set for a confrontation that would shape the fate of Azeroth itself, with Illidan Stormrage standing at the nexus of power and peril. Now we jump into the actual game with the events of Cthulhu within Classic. In Azeroth's history, a dark chapter unfolded when the sinister whispers of an old god Cthulhu stirred unrest beyond the Scarab Wall. As a malevolent force threatened to spill forth, the vigilant bronze dragon Anachronos sounded the call to arms, uniting the factions of the Alliance and Horde in a desperate bid to thwart the encroaching darkness. With determined and resolve, the champions of Azeroth labored tirelessly, forging anew the legendary Scepter of the Shifting Sands, unlocking the ancient barrier that held back the tide of Karaji horrors. As the Scarab Wall crumbled, the might of Kalimdor stood ready to confront the looming threat, bracing for a battle that would echo through the ages. In a titanic clash of wills and steel, the combined forces of the Alliance and Horde clashed with the relentless Karaji legions, pushing them back within the confines of their city. Yet the true test lay within the heart of the ancient stronghold, where valiant adventurers from both factions ventured forth to confront the twisted horrors lurking within. In the shadowed depths of the Karaji lair, they faced the ultimate challenge, the malevolent presence of Cthulhu itself. With courage and determination, they stood as beacons of hope against the encroaching darkness, battling against the insurmountable odds to vanquish the ancient evil once and for all. In the aftermath of the harrowing battle, the echoes of victory resonated across the sands of Silithus, a testament to the indomitable spirit of unity and heroism that defined the champions of Azeroth. Yet even as the dust settled and the scars of battle faded, the memory of their triumph would endure as a beacon of hope in the face of adversity. In the ancient records of Azeroth's history, yogg is a profoundly malevolent old god. He wielded a chaotic tyranny that reverberated across the world. 
He orchestrated the creation of the Curse of Flesh, a malevolent design aimed at assimilating the Titan's ingenious creations. When the Titans engaged in a cosmic war against the Old Gods, aiming to obliterate their citadels, a grim revelation surfaced. The infestation of these entities had become so entwined with Azeroth that eradicating the Old Gods would spell the doom of the world itself. Faced with this dire conundrum, the Pantheon opted for a different strategy. Rather than obliterating the Old Gods, they chose to neutralize their power and bind them within Azeroth for the enduring lifespan of the world. yogg surround found its home in the depths of Ulduar, nestled in the far northern realms of the flourishing planet. Six titanic watchers, Loken, Thorm, Hoder, Tyr, Mimiron, and Freya, were appointed as vigilant custodians, tasked with ensuring the near-eternal captivity of this malevolent force. Yet the imprisonment was not absolute. Yogg-Saron's malevolent influence manifested as Saronite, a dark substance that permeated the continent, crystallizing and corrupted all it touched. The whispers of the imprisoned entity insinuated themselves with the Saronite, seducing many into the throes of madness, including the Keeper Loken. The haunting legacy of Yogg-Saron's presence echoed through the ages, leaving a lingering mark on Azeroth. For eons, Yogg-Saron held the Keepers, including Loken, in a quiet and complacent state. His influence over them was feeble, struggling to convince them to directly serve the Old God. However, the arrival of Cho'Gall from Twilight's Hammer Clan changed the game. Cho'Gall weakened Yogg-Saron's chains, unleashing an iron-strong surge of influence over the Keepers. Yogg-Saron's malevolence extended beyond Ulduar, corrupting the roots of the world tree Vordrasil, leading to the creation of the Emerald Nightmare. Despite the immediate destruction of Vordrasil, the corruption persisted, affecting the Grizzlemoth Firbolgs, who later inhabited its remains. Yogg-Saron's impact on Azeroth's history became evident during the Ulduar Raid, where adventurers witnessed visions connected to key moments in the world's past. First, the creation of the Dragon Soul by Naltharion and the other dragon aspects emerged during the War of the Ancients, marking the cataclysmic Great Sundering. The assassination of King Lane by Garona followed, sealing the fate of Stormwind at the conclusion of the First War. Lastly, a haunting vision materialized, revealing the Lich King's torment of Bolvar Fordragon, destined to become the new Lich King after Arthas Menethil's demise. Within the eerie echoes of this final vision, the voice of yogg saron resonated, proclaiming a prophecy that would unfold with Arthas' defeat by the Ashen Verdict. He will learn, no king rules forever, only death is eternal. These foreboding words, chillingly echoed by Tyrannus Menethil's spirit in his final moments, marked the unavoidable path of destiny and demise. As the old god's voice echoed prophecies during the encounter, foretelling the demise of kings and the eternal nature of death, adventurers from the Alliance and Horde guided by Bran Bronzebeard rose to the challenge and ultimately defeated yogg saron Warchief Garrosh Hellscream's call to arms plunged the Alliance and Horde into a tumultuous conflict. Amidst the chaos, adventurers from both factions were drawn to the shores of Pandaria, a land veiled in secrecy and ancient mysteries. There, amidst the lush landscapes and serene beauty, a sinister force lurked in the shadows, the Shaw, a malevolent corruption fueled by the darkest depths of mortal emotion. As the Alliance and Horde delved deeper into Pandaria's mysteries, they uncovered the haunting truth behind this insidious presence. Initially believed to be linked to the legendary ruler Shao Hao, and his valiant efforts to shield his people from the ravages of the Burning Legion and the cataclysmic Great Sundering, the true origins of the Shah remain shrouded in uncertainty. Yet as the adventurers ventured further into the heart of Pandaria, the veil of deception began to unravel, revealing a dark source far more ancient and sinister than anyone could have imagined. As the conflict in Pandaria dragged on, Garrosh Hellscream's thirst for victory consumed him, plunging him deeper into a maelstrom of bloodlust and megalomania. Desperate to tip the scales in his favor, he turned to the Dark Arts, commanding the Bilgewater Cartel to unleash the secrets hidden within the sacred veil of Eternal Blossoms. What they unearthed shook the very foundations of Azeroth, an artifact of unimaginable power pulsating with the lingering essence of the deceased old god, Yashara. This relic, the beating heart of ancient evil, held the true genesis of the Shah, a force that had plagued Pandaria for millennia. Garrosh's loyal lieutenant, Malkarok, claimed the artifact for the Horde, its ominous presence fueled their dark ambitions. With the waters of the veil, Garrosh breathed new life into the heart of darkness, infusing it with newfound vigor within the depths of his stronghold, the Underhold. Hung as a grim trophy within his throne room, the pulsating heart became the focal point of Garrosh's twisted plans. 
envisioning the rise of a new order, the True Horde. The artifact whispered promises of conquest and dominion, igniting Garrosh's fervor for power. With the heart as his unholy catalyst, Garrosh delved into forbidden sorcery. Twisting Malkaruk into a grotesque, dire orc and forging a weapon of unparalleled malevolence for himself. Thus armed with the might of an ancient evil, Garrosh stood poised to unleash a reign of terror upon Azeroth, his thirst for conquest fueled by the pulsating beat of the Heart of Darkness. United in an unprecedented alliance, the forces of the Alliance and Horde rallied under the banner of a fearless band of adventurers. Their sight set on Orgrimmar, the seat of Garrosh's tyranny. With determination in their hearts and steel in their hands, they laid siege to the city's walls, prepared to confront the embodiment of their greatest adversary. Through the treacherous depths of the Underhold they ventured, facing untold horrors and insurmountable odds to reach Garrosh's inner sanctum. As the clash of arms reverberated through the chamber, the fate of Azeroth hung in the balance. In a final desperate bid for victory, Garrosh unleashed the full might of the heart of Yashara, channeling its dark power in a bid to turn the tide of battle. But even the mightiest of weapons could not withstand the combined resolve of the Alliance and Horde, and in a climactic showdown, Garrosh was vanquished. As the echoes of battle faded, the sinister power of Yashara waned, its malevolent influence dissipating into the ether. All that remained was a fleeting remnant, a fading breath, a haunting reminder of the price paid for victory. Now there is a section in the wiki talking about the old gods during Legion, but really during that time we don't deal with them directly. Same thing with Cataclysm and the book Stormrage. But in Legion, we fight the Emerald Nightmare, which was created by yogg Saron's corruption of the dream, but we don't deal with anything directly with the old gods. And I can always make a separate video talking about Xavius and the Nightmare corruption and all of that. But the next time we actually deal with an old god directly is in Battle for Azeroth. In the wake of the Legion's demise and the revival of open conflict between the Alliance and Horde, the insidious whispers of the old gods grew ever louder, particularly in the schemes of the cunning Nazoth. Amidst the storm-tossed shores of Kul Tiras, Nazoth and his loyal servant Queen Azara wove their dark web, ensnaring the noble Tide Sages in their sinister plans. These once respected guardians were transformed into the horrifying Kathir, puppets to the will of their malevolent masters. Meanwhile, in the shadowed forest of Drusfar, an ominous secret lay concealed within the heart of the land. Alliance emissaries stumbled upon the cryptic workings of the Heart's Bane Coven, practitioners of dark magic that drew upon a power rooted in the mysterious death realm of Thros. Unbeknownst to them, this grim realm was but a twisted offshoot of the Emerald Nightmare, its tendrils reaching across the veil between life and death. As tensions escalated and darkness gathered, the true extent of Nazoth's influence began to unfurl, crafting a web of deceit and corruption poised to envelop the world in darkness. In the face of this looming threat, heroes arose, their resolve tested as they ventured into the heart of darkness to confront the ancient evils that sought to unravel the fabric of reality itself. In the ancient heart of Xandalar, a sinister alliance unfurled its dark design. The artificial old god Gahun, bound by chains of imprisonment within the depths of Uldir, struck a dire bargain with the cunning troll prophet Zol. In exchange for freedom from its ancient confines, Gahun pledged its unholy allegiance to Zul, promising to ascend as the Loa of a new troll empire a pact sealed in blood and shadow. As the wheels of fate turned, a dark resurgence gripped the land. From the depths of oblivion, a Cathrax named Mithrax was resurrected. Fueled by the insatiable thirst for power that coursed through the veins of the Sethrak Korthic and his troll confidant, Jackrazet. With Cahoon's insidious influence spreading like a plague, its forces rallied to shatter the seals of its prison within Uldir. United in purpose, Zol and Mithrax spearheaded a relentless assault leading a horde of zealous blood trolls in a ferocious siege upon the sacred city of Dezar Alor. Though Zul met his demise amidst the chaos of battle, Mithrax, undeterred by the loss, unleashed a devastating assault upon the seal positioned within Dezar Alor's hollowed halls. With a thunderous roar, the seal shattered. Its ancient wards crumbled beneath the weight of Gahun's boundless hunger for dominion. As the tendrils of Gahun's corruption snaked through the ethereal realms of the Shadowlands, chaos reigned supreme. Spirits twisted and warped, their once pure essences tainted by the insidious touch of the Blood God. In a moment of revelation, the Zandalari princess Talanji, alongside the Horde emissary Rokan and Master Gadrin, received a dire message from the spirit of Vol'jin himself, 
The time had come to confront the source of this malevolent scourge, to assail the heart of Old Deer and vanquish Cahoon once and for all. With determination burning bright in their hearts, a courageous band of horde adventurers led by the resolute Talanji descended into the depths of the Titan Forge stronghold. Amidst the complex halls and shadowed corridors, they faced the full wrath of the Blood God's minions, their resolve tested with every step. Yet against all odds, they emerged triumphant, their blades stained with the blood of the fallen deity. To seal the victory and quell any doubts, Vol'jin's glaive, imbued with the spirit of the fallen hero, was plunged into the very heart of Cahoon, a testament to the enduring strength of the Horde and the valor of those who dared to stand against the darkness. As Azeroth's champion endeavored to infuse the heart of Azeroth with newfound power, the malevolent whispers of the old gods sought to disrupt the sacred ritual. From the shadows, Enraki assailants emerged, intent on thwarting the adventurer's noble quest. Meanwhile, Queen Ajara, fueled by the potent energies of Azerite harnessed by the heart of Azeroth, orchestrated a cunning scheme. With calculated precision, she shattered the ancient bonds restraining the Zoth, unleashing the malevolent entity upon the world. The stage was set for the awakening of Nyalotha, the sleeping city. An ancient bastion of darkness poised to unleash its horrors upon Azeroth. Under the sinister command of Nazoth, the forces of the Black Empire surged forth, threatening to engulf the world in a tide of chaos and despair. Within the nightmarish depths of Nyalotha, champions of Azeroth braved unspeakable horrors and confronted twisted heralds of madness, their courage the only barrier against the encroaching darkness. Their fates intertwined in a struggle for the very survival of Azeroth. In a stroke of divine intervention, the heart of Azeroth unleashed the cataclysmic power of the Forge of Origination, empowered by the ancient engine of Nalak Shah, laying waste to the abomination that was Nazoth and his accursed realm. As the dust settled and the echoes of battle faded, Magni Bronzebeard declared Azeroth liberated from the clutches of the old gods, heralding a new era of hope and renewal for the embattled world. And that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you did enjoy. This one was... Uh, interesting to work on but i think i covered everything if i missed anything let me know down below but if you did make it this far and you enjoyed it maybe consider liking and subscribing it helps the channel out and i would appreciate it but with all that said i'll see you in the next one do take care of yourself you're doing great don't be too hard on yourself life is hard enough as it is take care